Yeah, like I said, he's the coolest customer I've ever seen as a Colt. This is a, isn't out of breath. Things go better. In 1977, Bill O'Reilly was on Channel 8 Dallas, and he asked to speak to J. Walt Moore because he alleged that Lee Harvey Oswald was employed by the CIA. Yeah. Now, why did the CIA create all these files? Because O'Reilly asked this question. Thanks for saying I ain't running. Yeah, yeah, you know, we're at the prison. Oh, no. Could you get a picture of me and Jesse? You always tell me it's the last picture and you lie to me. Every time you lie to me. It's never the last. I know. Just about to get up there. Thank you so much. His father was the law firm with Ed Clark from 66 to 78. You think so? I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and he says unequivocally Lyndon Baines Johnson killed President Kennedy. Yeah. That's that's what Bar McClellan says, and he was in the law firm, and he said that Ed Clark, he was there when Clark got his $2 million payoff. He helped get it for him in the early 70s for doing the job. Same as Ken. Well, he also, well, he also says in the book, he said there was an ATF agent that was killed years ago. They called it a suicide in the 1980s. It was brought back up in front of the grand jury. They declared it a homicide. And Johnson, Clark, and Wallace were all indicted for murder, but they couldn't serve the indictment because they're all dead. So he, it, it wasn't like he hadn't killed before. One of those five gunshot suicides, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Really? Mark White said. Really? So I know everybody's asking this, but why did you come down here today? Because it's uh, November the 22nd, 2003, 40 years to the exact minute that President Kennedy was murdered. How old were you at the time? Twelve. Tell me about how you heard the news. Well, we were, like all kids, we were in school at the time, and uh, they announced over the loudspeaker that President Kennedy had been shot, and then they announced that he had been killed, and they told us that school was suspended and that we were to go home immediately. And that's basically what happened. Everyone, very quietly, you know, it was kind of a scary thing being a 12-year-old seeing a president, or not seeing it, but hearing that a president was murdered. And what's your feeling on what happened here? Well, my feeling is simply that I don't believe the Warren Commission, I don't believe the government's perspective of it, and that's good enough, because if, if, I, if I don't believe that, then it doesn't matter whether I have a, a belief of what I think happened here. No one will ever know what happened here. I just don't believe what the government told us happened here happened. I heard you out there debating with somebody about the details of the conspiracy. You were talking about common sense. One common sense question I had people ask is, um, if the government had the ability to plan such an elaborate conspiracy, why would you have such an elaborate conspiracy in a public place? Because that's the best place to do it. I mean, why not have one person? No, you got you got the governments, government and government ops, military ops, CIA ops, all of the operations you want to talk about, they're all compartmentalized. Nobody, very few people know the whole picture. Very few. Everybody just knows their little piece of the operation. I have a good friend of mine that didn't realize he was part of the arms for hostages in the 80s until he saw it break on television. And then he turned and looked at me and said, oh, gee, I was part of that. And he was on C he was a member of SEAL Team 6, the anti-terrorist unit. And he was given a job to deliver something from point A to point B. That's all he knew. Right. And, and, and then later on, he put two and two together and it made four. And he put four and four together and it made eight. But at the point of doing the job, he had no idea. And that's, and that's what, you know. And besides, why would someone come forward now to be called, what, a kook? Who, who of the mainstream media and government is going to believe anybody? They've got their definition. Right. Well, what I'm asking is, if you were part of the conspiracy, planning a conspiracy, why would you do it in a public place with, fat, with photographs around? If you had that much power, wouldn't you plan a private location? Wouldn't you poison his food rather than shoot him in public where people are going to take pictures? I don't know. I've never did it. 
Why would you ask me that? I'm not a voice of experience on assassinations. Well, because I was never in the CIA. I'm just wondering why everybody looks at it after the fact, but nobody ever questions because, common sense before because, the fact. Because, because, uh, oh, do you want common sense? What's Adolf Hitler's famous quote? That if you tell a lie big enough, people will believe it. The bigger the lie, the easier it is to sell. But that speaks volumes. How easy is it that, that they sold us here? It doesn't seem very easy. Given all the I do. I think it's easy. It's 40 years. Nothing has changed. The government's position hasn't changed. We're all kooks. So We're all any, labeled. Do you think there's any way to actually get the truth then? Not really. There's Not anymore. No, you'll be, well, you'll never, I don't think you'll ever get an, an admission that someone's going to admit. I think that, I think that one of the keys would be if they could get the, uh, if they could get the, uh, the psych psychiatrist records of, that Barr McClellan talks about. Lyndon Johnson at the very end of his life apparently, like many people, had some problems before he went to meet his maker. And he had very heavy psychological sessions with a doctor who of course because of doctor-patient privileges doesn't have to reveal anything. But as Barr McClellan said, if he could get those records, he believes Johnson confessed to it at that point in time. But again, that's only hearsay. Oh, it's a program. Yeah,